Oops. You weren't recording that, were you? Of course it was. <laughs> will, I not be blue? will I not be blacked out? Today we are in Beverly Hills at my dear friend, comedian Ron White's house. And we're going to give you a little teaser of his house because we're actually going to be doing a tour of it with Ron himself in the next few weeks. So you'll see little bits and bats uh, that Adam will insert in the video. But the reason that we're really uh, doing this video today is Vadim from Rist Aficionado has flown in and he's going to show us a bunch of great watches. He's actually just opened another store in Miami at the Satai Hotel. So he has the Manhattan store and now also in Miami. And he's in LA to show us some fun. That's not good. Fun watches. Snip. I know you'll leave it in, won't you? You horrible person, Adam. Let's just go look at watches. Can we go look at watches, please? Did you, did you see my new watch? I did. Switch the camera off. This I got this from Vadim. Switch it off? Well, well, we're... Do you want to show people it? Okay, let's show people. So my new Patek. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, it's very sparkly. I've had this about three or four weeks now, and I have not worn it before. What, what are you doing? What on earth are they? They're my shoes. Do you like them? <laughs> you wearing trainers is a bit weird. No, this is my new thing. I've got a bunch of these types of shoes, and I've never worn them. Uh -huh. So I thought, I'm going to start wearing them, because you know I like shoes. Do you like them? I do. Could you not have got any longer laces? Are they too long? Let's go and look at some watches. Okay. You're really horrible. Let's go. Go, you go first. Either I don't way. want you filming the back. My, go, go. Come on. So we are in Ron White's house and Vadim has flown in from New York. Thank you. To show us some watches. And it's, it's been, how long is it since I've seen you? Uh, before COVID. Wow. It was right before COVID. I think you were in New York in February. That's right. So right? Uh, 18 months-ish. Yes. Wow. Wow. Yes. Thank you very much for having me in Ron's house. I'm excited. Thank you for coming. Before we start, before we start, I want to thank you for this. I think this is the first time that you're actually seeing it with this strap on it because you sent yes, me the strap afterwards. And a rubber strap. Isn't yeah, that pretty? Amazing. I love this watch. See, I'm taming myself down now. I'm getting smaller watches and whatever. What have you got? Oh, I got some goodies for you. Oh, wow. Well, let's have a look at them and let's talk about them. I think we start with the, the least expensive ones. What do you think? Yeah, why not? And work, our, and work our way up. Yeah, work our way up. Do I need a glove? Your hands are... Baby white. Cl clean enough today. Yeah, moisturized, yeah. soft. Have you had a pedicure, a manicure recently? Are they shiny? They are, they're not actually. They are too. Oh, are they? Absolutely, they're perfect. And my toes match, not that anybody <laughs> cares. <but laughs> I don't want to see those. So we can start with uh, this two Rolexes to show a comp um, you know, comparison between the old Hulk and the Kermit, that, the new one that came out, the 40 millimeter Hulk and the 41 millimeter Kermit. So it's interesting, they look the same size, although this one is slightly bigger, exactly. right? What a difference a millimeter makes. Uh, absolutely. You've heard that before, I have right? indeed, yeah. Talk to us about the price and how these have changed in value, if you don't mind. They're, bo they're both r retailed under 10,000 and uh, the Hulk was always it was always trading for like thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars. Then slowly was uh, going up, and then when Kermit came out, the Hulk appreciated much more. And right now, the secondary market price on the Hulk is around twenty five, twenty six thousand. Is it really? Yeah. So what was the original retail price of this? Under 10000 That's interesting that the older one is more valuable than the, than the new one. I, I like them both. Which one do you prefer, Adam? Um, straighten that one. I think I prefer Kermit. Kermit? Oh, yeah, I like the contrast of the green and the black versus the green and green. I'm going to put my glasses on so I can speak educatedly that I can actually... Educatedly, is that a word? Yeah, yeah, the glasses really help. Yeah, right. I have both of these. Yeah, you do have. Yeah. Beautiful watches. Okay, let's move on. Okay, I, I gotta ask you, then, what, 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 what is that? Oh, uh, this is a masterpiece. Masterpiece? I know this exactly is, what this is. This is, is the G-Shock of all the G-Shocks. A G-Shock? This is a gold G-Shock watch. <laughs> Only 35 pieces made. It was made for their 35th anniversary. It's a solid 18 karat gold. That is insane. I'm going to put it on here, that way. This is very useful for filming, isn't it? Yeah, no, I like it. So, solid gold 
G-Shock. Solid gold G-Shock. Um, comes in a very special box. This has a 22 month uh, power reserve and it's uh, solar charged. So you stick it in the sun and it goes for, I can't see you. <laughs> it's crazy what glasses do. And it goes for 22 months? For 22 months. Why would anybody buy a solid gold G-Shock? Because look at it. You'd look, wear that, look, wouldn't you? I would it's... absolutely rock the beep out of that. What's the special about the box? You said a special box. I mean, they, they made a special box uh, with 30, uh, you know, 35 limited edition, it says on it, and it comes with a, uh, with a special tea kettle. A tea kettle? Tea kettle. What does a tea kettle have to do with a watch? Do you know? <laughs> I don't you know, you know G that. G-Shocks better than anybody. I've only seen pictures of this thing, and then I saw the price, because I was looking at buying one, and I was like, oh, that's fun, like a gold G-Shock. Maybe it would be like $1,100 or... Whatever. How much is it? 130000 secondary market. Sorry? 130000 For a G-Shock? Re retail is around 70000 What currency are we talking? <laughs> US dollars. <laughs> right? Isn't that crazy? That, that, that's beyond crazy. 130000 for a G-Shock. It is heavy. There's some gold weight to I... it. Yes, you can. Thank you. Don't drop it. That's so... And I love the fact that they use like the most traditional G-Shock shape as well. This is like the basic old school G-Shock. I just bought a G-Shock online from G-Shock because apparently they're going to sell out for $99. Yep. It was bright red. Bargain. And I'll show it to you in a week or so when Bargain. it comes. Wow. Crazy. Absolutely this crazy. This is a yeah. So in comparison, that's a Patek right next to it, right? This is a 5990 stainless steel. And how much is that guy? Uh, this one secondary market is going for 135000 so the same price as a G-Shock? <laughs> so Hold on, may I have that back? <laughs> let's put them both yeah, on the stand. Yeah, let's put them on the stand next to each other. Am I allowed to take this plastic off? Yes, let me take it off. Yeah. Okay, so guys, you've got a choice. A Patek, the latest 59.90, and no disrespect to G-Shock, I mean, I love them. But the same price, what do you buy? I mean, what do you buy? I know you're a G-Shock. You know what I would buy. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> I would. You 100%. wouldn't. I, listen, Th this will this will last forever, and you can pass it down to generations. And this is a G-Shock <laughs> that lasts forever. Like that's literally what G-Shocks do. Maybe this will go up in value. It will. It will. It, it really a collector's piece. So, as a watch dealer, take your dealer sense out of it for, for a second. If you were had to buy one of these two watches, which one would you buy? Well, th this is a type of piece that you have a lot of watches in your collection, and this is just one of them that you must have. You know, you, you have to have this, and you have to have the Rolexes, and you have to have, you know, other brands. Do you hear that, Michael? And, yeah. and this is... I have to have. I have a lot and, of watches in my collection, and, and make your promise. <laughs> this is not going to be one of them. <laughs> but this I, is beautiful. I feel like this is the type of watch, because a lot of people get so stuck on... Yeah, I know, it's gorgeous. Isn't it beautiful? It's not a G-Shock, though. A lot of people get stuck on the fact that watches have to be resold. It seems like every right. comment I read on our videos is, what about the resale? What about the resale? What's wrong with just buying a watch that you like? I and totally it. agree with you. People buy, are today buying watches for the wrong reason. They're looking at, what's it going to be worth? How much is it going to be worth? Is it going to go up? Who cares? You're going to buy it to enjoy it and wear exactly. it, right? That's and maybe pass it down to your, your son exactly. or daughter, whatever it might be. Um, of course, but, everybody, every, everyone wants to make the right investment, right? But it has to be also not with the thoughts of reselling it and making money on it. It's, uh, it's very it's something interesting. That you like. Really is, but this is beautiful. This is beautiful. Let's put the G-Shock away and I, move, I was move on say, to. I can't look at move, anything else. Move right on now. to proper watches. Yeah. No disrespect. Somebody will probably make a fortune on that watch. Talking about buying and selling. Yeah. This is gorgeous. Please, if you ever need anybody what? to wear that watch to, you know, like take pictures. Like model it on your jet ski. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Then uh, just, just call you. Mm -hmm. I got you. <laughs> Goodness gracious. I don't even need the tea kettle. I'll just take the watch. <laughs> I'm sure. I don't get the tea kettle. I mean, I'll give the tea kettle to my <laughs> Langer. I've had my eye on a Sightwerk for the longest period of time, but I haven't bought one. And I don't know. That's the one Kevin had in, in one of the videos. It's like digital and analog. Big, oh, yes, yeah. beautiful watch. They make great watches. Let me put my glasses on so I can see. When I look at a watch without my glasses at this distance, it just looks like a metal circle. It's like blurry. <laughs> Beyond blurry. That is beautiful. So uh, is that buttons on the side? 
Yeah, so it's interesting the way this case is made. You you don't see that it has uh, any pushers, but these are pushers that changes. Oh, how clever! They they make and fabulous watches. Interesting. So, how much oh. is this watch? It's obviously white gold. It's heavy. It's white gold. It's uh, fifty-five thousand. Fifty-five thousand. So nowhere it, near the price of a G-Shock. Right. <laughs> it, it doesn't trade so much over retail. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I love this this stand. My new stand. Your new stand. Gorgeous piece, right? That Oops, is very nice. Upside down. Lovely piece. Fifty-five thousand. And and in relation to retail, what is that? So the, uh, I'm sorry. I mean, uh, fifty-five thousand is the retail, and uh, sixty-five thousand is the selling oh, price. Oh, I see what he did there. Right after you said you liked it, uh, you see that? I might have you look out for the site work for me. If you okay. come across a, a, yeah. a really good deal, I'd always be interested. Such a pretty piece. What's next? Um, what is that sparkly thing in the corner? That sparkly thing in the corner. Top there. This one here. Yeah. It mm -hmm. looks like a Daytona. It looks very heavy to me. I think it's a platinum one. I know a lot about these think. platinum Daytonas recently. Do you know why? Uh, let Can me I guess. tell them? Yes. Reveal the secret. Reveal the secret. I just bought one from him. Which one? It's not the, here. Where the is plat it? I'll bring it right now. But look at this. Isn't this gorgeous? Feel the weight of it, Adam. Oh, hold on to me. Oh, wow. It's about, I'm guessing, 270, 280 grams. Yeah, I mean, that's that's almost as heavy as a G-Shock. This is my new watch. So this is Michael's new watch. Oh, wow. Look at that. Platinum Daytona with the baguette markers. Isn't that gorgeous? That's beautiful. I'm going to put it on here so you can yeah, you should. film it properly. Where's it? Uh, oh, give me oh. that watch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they counted them. <laughs> One day I'm going to get away with that. So, so this is absolutely gorgeous, and I really wanted to have this watch. However, it's very bling. This you can wear subtly pretty much anywhere. This one you can't. For sure, yeah. And this is also incredibly expensive. Yes. How much is this one? 350, 350,000. 350,000. Versus how much for the one that you just bought? I think it was like 145? 145, oh, wow. exactly. Yeah. But this also has diamonds. Yeah, just on the hour yeah. markers. Yeah, yeah. Just on the hour markers. And then you have another one in there that, that doesn't this... have the diamonds. And the difference is, I'm going to take this one off for a second and put this here. Now, I'm sounding knowledgeable. I'm really not. It's just that because I just bought this watch, I did some homework on it. To look at these two watches, the immediate thing that you can tell this one has diamonds is it doesn't have the dark circles on the, um, what do you call these things? Um, what? The subdials. 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 I knew that. Subdials. It went blank. It's because I don't have my glasses, glasses on. Put glasses back on. Yeah, I have my glasses on. <laughs> I, I oh, can't right, hear yeah. you. Let me put my glasses on. There we go. Now I can hear you. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the difference. And I'm looking also, there's a slight difference in the color of the dial, isn't there? The bezel? Or the no, dial? No, the dial itself. Is this one slightly more blue or is it my imagination? No, I, I think that the color of the dial is exactly the same. It's just the reflection of the brown subdials maybe. Ah, uh, you might be um, right. Three hundred and how much was it? Three. Three fifty. Three hundred fifty thousand. And what's the retail US on this dollars. one? Probably close to I, two. I, I would probably, if I would take take a guess, I I don't know exactly. I would say probably one fifty. Oh and, really? And that's factory. All that's factory, factory. Yeah, these all are factory. all factory. Yeah. Did oh. I make a mistake? Should I have got this one over this one? I mean, you could always get both. No, I couldn't. <laughs> You can always upgrade later on. You do always take it back, right? I'll take trade. it back. And yeah, we'll trade. So what happens if the value goes down? Because the list on this watch is, what, about 90 grand? Right. So let's say they go down in value a little bit and I want to trade it back. Do I get close to what I paid for it or do I get market value? I am most confident that it will not go down. So I can give you my word that... Uh, I can always trade it. That's you. a good thing to talk about. Let's talk about that for a second. So, you're confident they won't go down? Because right now, some people say we're in a bubble, right? 
What do you think is realistically going to happen to the price of Rolex watches? I, I, I think because of the limitation in production and uh, the limitation of uh, um, them allocating the pieces uh, to people is very limited and there's much more demand than they uh, they can deliver and so you so think across therefore, the board i think across the board a lot of most rolex models especially like the platinum ones which very hard to get um will always stay strong in value and the stainless steel ones are hard to even get. and the stainless steel but i think all rolexes right now are way over list aren't yeah. they pretty much yeah crazy crazy okay so let's put this one away because that one is not for showing anymore. So this is yours? Yes, you'll see that appear in future videos, because I think it'll become one of my favorites. And, and Vadim took very good care of me, as he always does. I, I mean- I always try to thank you. You really Michael do, you. you really do. You're and, a good friend. You know, um, we've done lots of, what, well, I guess I've bought a lot of watches from you, and I'll pick up the phone and I'll say, Vadim, I saw on your site you have this. How quickly can I have it? And the following morning at 10.30, ding dong, <laughs> guy with the gun comes. <laughs> yes. I swear every time I see you, you're like, oh, guess what, guess what? Like another watch, you're like, yeah, who from? The Dean. Like every- well, Where else would I buy time. one? Where else would I buy one? Let's stay in this box here. You have two, they look similar, but different colors. Those are the ceramics, right? So these are both AP ceramic perpetual calendars. And if I'm not mistaken, these are crazy prices as well oh, now. Super. That's an interesting watch, ceramic. So, so question for you, are these fragile? If you like tap it, will it shatter? Uh, yes, they, they, can, uh, they can crack if, um, if you hit it hard enough in a, in a, you know, in a sharp corner. Um, but th what's good about them, they don't scratch. You know, they just shatter. <laughs> they shatter, exactly. <laughs> so, so tell us about these, how much are these watches? So the difference is th uh, this is a perpetual calendar and this one is perpetual calendar and this one is open work. So it's like a skeleton where you can see, see through it. And how much are they? And uh, the white perpetual goes on a secondary market for 300,000 and the black one open works uh, goes for 490,000 right below. Really? Five yeah. And, and what's the list on these? Uh, list, uh, about one, this one is like 130 and I believe this one is like around 150. So this is nearly three times it's, yeah. it's yeah. retail. Super hard to get. Look at the back of it. Is it upside down? That's the right way around. Well, I, I can't believe that people are paying this much money. What do you think is creating that demand? I mean, they wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to spend half a million dollars on a watch that costs 150,000. I mean, I wouldn't. It's, I mean, I guess I just did. I, I, I paid over... Over retail. I paid over yeah. retail. I guess it's just relative. Listen, when you're a collector and you, you're passionate about something and you want it... So uh, what are your thoughts you on these? Will they maintain this price or will they, will they go down? I think it's going to maintain the price because um, there's really none around. So realistically, if, if you have money that you're going to invest in the stock market, you're much better off putting them in watches because they just continue to go up really in investment right now but they could and also it, and, it's, and it's proven itself um during covid was everybody thought watch is going to go down you know the whole world is in a problem the pandemic it only went up it's, it's i, I really, think it it's, really proved itself as being an investment it's it's really really crazy what's your favorite so far g-shock outside of the g-shock <laughs> um i don't have one i don't like any of the others <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the uh, that diamond Daytona, the sparkly Daytona. This really? One? Yeah. You've really changed. I, well, no. You've really changed. I love <laughs> Daytonas. I love Daytonas, and I, I'm actually as much as I, I appreciate them. For me personally, I wouldn't have the like the baby blue or whatever they're calling that that dial, but I do like that sparkly one. They call it the icy blue. There you go. I recognize that. I have one of those. I, I brought it, but then I realized that uh, you do have this one already. That's the Sky. That's the Jacob & Co. Um, uh, Shinomiya Sky. Beautiful piece. And if you want to see the full video of this, we have, when I got mine, I did a full video on that watch. So, it'd be interesting. And then this 
plastic Richard Mille. It's not plastic, is it? <laughs> <laughs> is that like the last edition or final edition? Or? This is called RM11 last edition. Though. So this is the last one of RM11 series that they made. It's uh, in blue ceramic. Before the 02 and 03 exactly. and 04 and yes. 476. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty watch, right? Yeah, I do like them. They're, they're it's limited of, of 50 pieces. How much do you think this is, Adam? I mean, RMs are crazy, aren't they? Uh, I think this, when it came out, uh, or the retail is what, 135-ish? Uh, yeah, around I, one, yeah, 130 to 140. I was gonna guess like 500 grand. How much is it? You hit the spot. Yeah? Yeah. Is it really? Yeah, it's like 490 I'm asking for it. Why? I just don't, I just don't get it. I thought of a sensible number and then I doubled it. And then added your phone number. <laughs> yeah, and then that got me there. <laughs> Unbelievable. If everybody had a crystal ball and just bought all of these things, you know. So well, was there a point in time where you could pay retail for those, like easily? I bought mine at retail. All of them? All of them. And how long ago was that? Well, I have a long time since I bought an RM. They won't sell me them anymore. Um, it's because you keep talking. I don't. I, I think it's, a, <laughs> I, I, I don't. I just don't understand it. It's hype that's created this, <laughs> right. right? It's the Dogecoin of watches. No, it's more the Bitcoin. But that's fallen well, recently. Have no, you seen that? It's fallen legit. recently. No, yeah. it's not. But Bitcoin's a complete and utter fabrication. It's a fantasy. Uh oh. RIP Michael in the comments. It anyway. was 68,000 bucks what, a month ago, and it's 31,000 today. Yeah, and it was 300 when I bought my first one. You have Bitcoin? Yeah. Ooh. Nice. Well, you take Bitcoin, right? Huh? We take Bitcoin. Let's stay away from the topic <laughs> of Bitcoin. <laughs> anyway, was there a point in time where you could actually buy them? Easily. There was a point in time where they couldn't give these away. Really? Right. My very first, I had a uh, gold titanium RM01. It was fifty-seven thousand dollars, and they got a discount on it. No way. Yeah. No. There was there, there was that time. Yeah. It was. Uh, yeah, I'll no tell you what it was. It was about, let's see, uh, about twelve, thirteen years ago. Yeah. Somewhere around there. Wow. Yeah. Even less. Yeah. Possibly what, less. So what's that I think watch less. worth now then? 300 grand. And you paid in the 50s for it? I think I paid like 47, 48,000 for it. Wow. Couldn't give them away, nobody wanted an RM. That's a pretty good return. Right? Yeah, 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 there was that time. Yeah, and now, you know, you, you stick this on the right wrist of the right people and everybody wants it and we, they did a great job. They Michael, did a great job. You know what we need to do? What do we, we need, need to do? bump the price of G-Shocks. <laughs> $130,000. I know, exactly. Let's like get behind that. Let's, let's really get behind it. We'll buy all of them for 99 bucks. And then we'll make ten dollars on each watch by pumping the price up. <laughs> That's and we'll plan. make a coin out of it as well. <laughs> <laughs> and an NFT. Don't understand that either. But no, it's a beautiful watch, uh, and uh, I think they probably will continue to go up for a while, right? Yeah, I think it's going to stay strong for a while. Interesting. I don't see a reason it's going to go down. So I know before we get to these other boxes, uh, boxes, boxes, watches in this box, I know you've got another box. Why don't we cut this, bring the other box, continue with those and all the goodies in the other box. Okay. And make another yeah. video. Yeah, we'll do that. So with that said, I'm going to say cheerio. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, say goodbye. Thank you very much for watching. We're in it to win it. See ya. <laughs>